Okay, so in this question, we will be looking at moment. When you say moment, moment is defined as first times distance. Okay, or uh, it can be defined as the tendency of a force to cause a body to rotate about a fixed point. So let's say I have let's say I have a door here. And then this is the door knob where the force is applied. And then this is the turning point. Okay. So when I apply this force here, this force will cause the door to turn about this point. So this distance here is known as distance D. Okay. Distance D. It's the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line of action of the force. So this is the line of action of the force. So you see that this distance makes an angle of 40, 90 degrees to the line of action of the force. So this is the moment arm. Okay, so this is called the moment arm. So moment will be equal to force times what the perpendicular distance and force is newtons and then distance is what meters. So the new the unit will be what newton meter. That's for moment. Okay, so let's say we have another system. I have a door here, and then in this case, the force is being applied at an angle. Let's see, theta. Okay, and then this is the turning point, and then this is the distance d. So you see that this distance here is not perpendicular to this force. Okay, so this distance here is not perpendicular to this force. So in that case, we can't see that moment equals what force times d in this case unless you're able to find this perpendicular force here okay, so in that case you can use the the y component of this force because that would make a perpendicular to the moment and d okay so if you can't if you don't use the y component of the force then you can extend your line of action of the force okay when you extend the line of action of the force, you can trace any line from the axis of rotation to this line of action of the force. So you can name this R. So another way to do this is to say moment equals what? The force times the R here. Okay, the force times the R here. Okay, so you, with this, I can see this angle here. Okay, I have the same angle here. Since they are opposite, so for that matter, I will say that sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. That's r over d. So d equals sorry, r will now be equal to what d sine theta. Okay. So since then, I can kind of write it as f equals what sorry moment equals force times d sine theta which is also the same as what r okay so we want to find for moment in the vector form okay find for moment using the vector approach you can use this method so that be moment equals the cross product of the force vector and then the unit vector r so when you use this method that means you are using the vector approach to solve for moment so when you take the cross product of these two that will give you the moment and this approach will give you the the magnitude of the moment and then the, the, the direction of the moment okay so with this knowledge let's go ahead and then solve some questions okay so i have this question on the screen which says that for the balance mechanism shown determine the value of f so that the resultant moment of all forces about point O is zero. So you are going to determine for the value of F so that the resultant moment of all the forces about one point O is what? Zero. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to find for a moment of each of the forces, then we add all of them, then equate to zero, then solve for the value of what F. So our first take force one, which is what eight kilonewtons. So I draw the system here. So this is the system, and then I have the 8 kilonewton here, 
and then this is the line of action of what the force okay the line of which the force is acting and how this distance to be how this distance to be three meters okay and then this is the point o so you see that this is the line of action of what the force so you look for the distance perpendicular to the axis of rotation so that would be this distance here it is going to be about three meters so we know that moment equals force times distance okay so our m1 will be equal to the eight kilometer times the perpendicular distance which is what three meters so that will give me 24 kilonewton meter okay so how are you going to know whether this moment is clockwise or anti-clockwise for you to know that a moment is clockwise or anti-clockwise let that force what act alone okay in the system so we consider this force acting alone the system as i've drawn so you take clockwise moment to be negative and the anti-clockwise to be positive so as you may apply this force here okay on this object and you can have the pivot is when I apply this force, it will cause this body to turn about the point in this way. So that will be what clockwise moment. So therefore, it will be negative. So my moment here will be negative. So M1 will be equal to negative 24 kilonewton meter. Okay, so that's my M1. Okay, so I'll do the same for M2 also. So we are going to solve for M2, which is using the second force. So the force is acting this way, which is 4 kN. And then this is the point O. So we look for this distance from here to the line of force, action of the force. And that distance is 2 plus 2, so that will be 4 meters. And the moment is what? Force times for the perpendicular distance. So that will be M2 be equal to 4 kN times 4 meters so that be 16 kilo eating meter so how will you know whether this will be positive or negative so let's check whether it will be a clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction so the, when this force is applied here and look at where the pivot is this force will cause this object to move in this direction that's anti-clockwise so i'm going to be positive so i have m2 to be equal to 16 kilonewton meter okay so from here you solve for m3 so for the m3 let me draw the system again i have the system to be here and then this is the point of rotation and then the third force which is the five kilonewton is acting at somewhere here which is five kilonewton and then the distance from this side is two meters same from here also at 2 meters so this is the line of force action of the force and then the perpendicular distance is here so this perpendicular distance from point O is for 2 meters and you know this force is being applied here and this is the point of rotation so it will cause this object to move in this direction that's what anti-clockwise so the moment will also be positive so my m3 will be equal to force which is 5 kN times the perpendicular distance which is what two meters so that would be equal to 10 kN meter so m3 equals 10 kN meter okay so now let's solve for the the moment of the the fourth force okay so the fourth one will be I'm going to draw the system again okay so this is one side of the system so or something like this this side is short and then this is the pivot so this is f and then this distance is one meter and then this distance here is what three meter so this is the line of action of the force so we look for the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation which will be this distance here so it's three it will not be this one because this one here is not this one meter here okay it's not 
perpendicular to this. The force is passing through, so you can't use this one meter, but we rather look for the perpendicular distance, which is what these three meters. So the fourth moment, M4, be what? Force times the perpendicular distance, that's F kilonewton times three meters. So this will give me three F kilonewton meter. So would this be a positive moment or a negative? So we can write the forces. When this force is applied here, it will cause this object to move in this direction. So it will be clockwise moment. So therefore it will be negative. So M4 equals minus 3 F kilonewton. Okay, so we found for the moment of each of the forces. So let's go back to the question. The question says that the resultant moment of all the forces is about what point O is what zero. So the resultant moment of about uh, the resultant moment of all the forces is about point O is what zero. So that means when you add all these moments, it should be equal to what zero. So with that, we'll be able to find the value of what F. So that'll be M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus M4 should be equal to zero okay so let's do this so that will be minus 24 plus 16 plus 10 mm -hmm. then minus 3f minus 3f should be equal to zero so let's simplify this so i have minus 24 so 16 plus 10 will give me 26 and then minus 26 plus minus 24 plus 26 that gives me 2 that will so 2 minus 3f equals what 0 so let me take 2 to this side so i have minus 3f equals minus 2 so i divide both side by minus 3 both side by minus 3 so i then now have f to be equal to 2 over Three. So let's change this into this mass and see. That gives me zero point zero point six 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 seven kilonewton. So that'll be the force that will cause the system to be balanced.